Good morning, good morning. Welcome from wherever you're watching from. Uh, welcome to the fourth episode of our Investing Tuesdays. Hashtag Investing Goes Digital. In case you missed our previous sessions, I will run you through uh, some of the topics that we've discussed in our three, uh, in our three episodes uh, that have passed by. And on our launch, we discussed on how to start your investment journey. This is just to guide uh, the audience and the investors on, where, on how they can actually start their investment. And then on our second uh, webinar, we discussed to see invest build a plan. How can you do anything without a plan? So even in investments, you actually need a plan to actually make an investment. And then on our third webinar, we discussed um, Mkoredi to Nanza to invest in the stock market. In this, uh, in this session, we actually uh, took the, the audience and the investors on a step-by-step -step guide how to actually uh, start investing and, uh, in the stock market. And for now, I will, we will go through a highlight of our previous uh, webinar. What is the percentage of young people who are investing? Over a million accounts in the CDSC. Someone probably is asking. Is there a connection between NSC stock trading and Forex? Investing in companies that are listed on the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Our market is being controlled over 60% by foreigners. Everyone can invest. Mm -hmm. NSC offers training mm -hmm. on all asset classes. We are now allowing you to make your investments also through that same form. Any money can get in. And super, we are so excited to have you. My name is Irongo Agema. I'll be co-hosting with Maureen Mahu. And we are really delighted because today's topic is one that is very, very exciting. So today we'll be dissecting and looking, breaking down what a share is. And we have an awesome panel. And we are super excited that you are still there. You are watching us and you are following. I don't know about you, but I decided even today as I come in, I'm really ready to learn and also gain a few tips here and there. We have an excellent, awesome panel. Panel, and I'll allow Maureen to go ahead and introduce them. Thank you, Agema. Um, on to my extreme right, we have Jackson Kiminje, who is the training and public education uh, manager. He has more than uh, 13 years of experience in the capital market, and he describes himself as the capital, as the capacity development uh, specialist. He's also the pioneer of the investment challenge. Welcome, Jackson. Thank you very much. In the middle, we have Madam Catherine Carita. She is the executive director brokerage at uh, NCBA. She has uh, 12 years experience in the capital market. She is passionate about uh, financial awareness of the youth, and she. Her mantra is, I can, end of story. So she is a, a leading a sponsor as well for the investment challenge. Welcome, Catherine. Thank you and good morning. Good morning. Uh, on my immediate uh, right, we have David Kanye, who has uh, 16 years of experience in the capital market. He is the head of um, market deepening at CMA, that is Capital Markets Authority. He has been involved in various uh, projects, especially involving around uh, innovations in the capital market, surveillance, you know. So, welcome, David. Thank you. Um, Oh, Maureen, I can see you have a high-powered delegation. Yes. You know, the combined experience, I think, is really something to look out for. And the beauty about it is that we shall be breaking it down, making it so easy for you to be able to understand. And we are really honored to have you guys. Karibuni sana to the exchange and to all our viewers. Welcome to the exchange. Something is cooking. Uh, we say this is a kitchen in the capital market. So this is a kitchen, and you are getting it fresh from the kitchen. Over to you, Maureen. Thank you, Agema. I have my pen and paper ready. Yes. I can see you have your time. <laughs> ready. Uh, to our viewers, I hope you, are, you have your notebook ready. I know for some who have been joining us since the beginning, your notebooks are almost full, and we want to see uh, to reap fruits from the our from the previous webinars. So to uh, we'll start with Jack. So I know um, when we also all about all you need to know about shares. So someone is wondering what is a share. Could you kindly break down what is a share to us? Thank you very much, uh, Maureen, for your question and um, I would like first of all to confirm that we don't want to use the big terminologies to describe these financial products. Sure. First thing is uh, a share in terms of definition is a unit of ownership but uh, for the longest time that I've been teaching people I always tell people think about a cake. Uh, when the four or five people want to make a cake they will come together and they maybe contribute money or the materials to cook the cake. 
So you can feel that as the company. So initial owners of the company come in and contribute capital to start a company. And then the capital is what defines now how much you own. So this cake uh, we are calling the company, if you take it literally, you can slice it into small bits, which are now called shares. So that unit of ownership you're talking about is a small piece that you own in that company. But in this case, I'm saying it's a small piece of the cake that you're entitled to. Then uh, back to the cake analogy. If the cake expands, or when you're baking the cake, it grows in size. So as the company grows, then uh, that's how your share value grows. So the basic thinking that you need to look up to when you think about shares is just that basic unit of ownership then it has been given value in terms of monetary value by what you have purchased it. And we have um, a space whereby we get into the share space. If, for instance, you are the original owners of the company, that is uh, the initiators of the, the cooking of the cake, then uh, you are the pioneers. So if you bought shares at that particular point, you are in the initial public offering space, the primary market side of the market, but if you are buying the shares from our secondary market, like now I go buy KCB shares or ABSA shares in the market, in the secondary market, then that's the secondary market. So that is how the shares link with us in terms of what they are and how they get to be owned by individuals. Oh, wow, wow, Jack, you know you're talking about secondary market, <laughs> and I'm just thinking, you know, uh, when I was in secondary, <laughs> and I'm wondering, so, so what is uh, secondary, is there primary? And, and I like the definition, I like the analogy you've given about mm. a cake. Yes. Yeah, and I'm sure today, today is a Tuesday, so some guys, younger guys will be talking about a Who pizza. Have cake? Yes, let's have cake. <laughs> yeah, so, so, and I like that analogy, yeah. it's so simple that someone has a portion of it. So maybe Maybe just to break it down, I'm just wondering for someone, uh, what do you mean by secondary? You talked about secondary. Uh, what, what is the secondary market? Uh, thank you very much, David, for that uh, question. In, the, in, the, in terms of you as an owner of shares, you can either buy the shares when you're starting the business or when you want to sell you, or you buy the shares from somebody else. So like five people start a company, they own each maybe 20% of the shares. And then from there, uh, they stay with the shares until they, are, uh, they feel like transisting the company to other owners. Mm. So in the, if you buy the shares before they start being sold or being bought uh, in the market, or what you call in the open uh, platforms of, of access in terms of either private equities or public offering like shares in the stock market, you are literally the owners, in the, the pioneer owners of the company. However, immediately after the pioneer owners of the company was to sell shares, there comes two phases of life. One is you either choose people you are selling the shares to, or you can choose to open up your company to the general public, me and you who is watching. So if you choose to open it to the general public, you go through maybe two, pro uh, there are two processes that you can go through it. The first one is what we call an IPO, initial public offer. And the second one is what you call private placement, whereby you identify a group or you identify a shareholders or a potential investors who would like to work within that company. When you go through the, either the, the private placement or the IPO route, then you come and list the company. You now sell the shares to the general public using the open platform that we are calling the stock market. So all the shares that are trading in the stock market at the moment is secondary market trading. People who bought the shares before they came to the stock market is in the primary market. Wow. So, so when people are buying Safaricom IPO, they are not buying from the stock market, they were buying directly from Safaricom in the primary market, as you yes. said. Yes. Wow, thank you very much even for that clarity. I think these are very important nuggets that we are getting. So when there's an initial public offering, what we call IPOs, I remember the Kenjan one, it was very great. I mean, everybody made money. And of course, you remember the Safaricom, more guys came into the market. So thank you very much, Jack. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Um, uh, Catherine, yes. on to you. What is the benefit of taking up that piece of cake? Basically, what is the benefit of owning that share? Thank you very much. And, and I do agree with uh, Jack that you, know, you own a piece of something bigger. So what is the benefit of that? There are various uh, reasons why one would want to own a share. And the first, it is a form of investment. So you are actually saving for your future. 
And when you save for your future, you're saving so that you could, one, draw that investment, even a bigger investment, and uh, the markets allow you to do that. So by owning this share, you benefit two ways. One, uh, these companies are paying dividends, so you're able to get some um, income annually from that investment. And secondly, based on how that company is performing, there is what we call capital gain. You buy today at 15 shillings, and maybe a year later it's at 30 shillings, and that is your capital gain. Uh, the beauty about stocks or a share is that there's really no upside. Uh, you've seen stocks move up 100%. We've seen stocks move up 150%. So unlike a fixed product where you know this is the only return I'll get, 6% or 5%, here, you know, the opportunity is open because it all depends on how the markets react and therefore your capital gain, uh, even over the years, will continue to grow based on the kind of company you have selected. But secondly, the easier point of uh, markets or shares is that they're very liquid. So if I wanted to invest, get a good return, but when I need my money, I'm able to exit quite quickly. Compare that to land. It would take months to actually get a transaction such as selling a piece of land done. But if today I own a couple of shares in different stocks or companies, I can quickly liquidate that when the need arises. So even the liquidation process of a share is, is, is very convenient and therefore makes investing in that piece of cake very attractive. Uh, lastly also, it's a way to diversify our investments. I mean, uh, we Kenyans love land, and uh, we always buy in the next plot. And that takes a lot of uh, saving before you could buy a piece of, a piece of uh, land. Whereas today, I could buy five shares, I could buy 100. And over time, you, you're able to own something uh, substantive, as opposed to sitting out and waiting to accumulate a couple of millions of shillings to buy a piece of land. So this is a way to diversify. You may have that piece of land. Look at the market as another way where you could actually invest and have, as I said, a potential return that is much higher than holding on to certain assets that are quite illiquid. Oh, maybe Maureen, if I could interject. I, I really like the, the three key points that she's mentioned. And I remember there was one time I was looking at the end of the year, how people made their money. And it was comparing different asset classes. And shares seem to be really topping, uh, I mean, the, the highest returns that people would be able to get. And I did, do remember fondly, I think one of the best uh, shares, I don't know, maybe your experience in buying and maybe purchasing, I know you're a market practitioner, but uh, what, what has been your experience? Maybe have you invested, have you reaped some of these benefits? Or, you know, sometimes they, they usually uh, joke about brokers because uh, if you're in the brokerage or you're, you're, you're that trading participant, either way, you're making money. Do you yourself invest? Thank you again for that question. Yes, uh, we, we preach and we believe in what we preach. So yes, I'm a big investor. I have, over the years, bought low, sold high. Um, and it's just uh, timing of when you get in and also knowing when to get out. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys have previously ran, you know, invest with a plan, so always yes. have that plan. So whenever you meet those objectives of your plan, if your target was 30%, then surely you could say, look, I've made enough money over this period and you could exit. I personally am a believer in the, sto in the stock market. I have invested over the years. I keep coming in and going out. And uh, the returns have been uh, very satisfying. Of course, there are investments you have made, or I have made, that uh, are currently, maybe even this year, struggling. But the beauty about the markets is you don't have to exit. Mm. Even if it's red today, it's a paper loss. I have not actualized that loss. Mm. And therefore, we keep talking about investing being a, a horizon game. Mm. So those that are not looking very pretty right now, if you, if you ride the wave and keep them in that portfolio, because remember you're investing for the future. I could yes. be investing for my retirement. Mm. So I don't need to sell them right now. I don't mm. need to panic. Um, whatever is not doing well over the cyclical cycles we see, there'll be a time when they will also rise and, and perform. So yes, I am an investor. I believe in it. I've seen the returns. I enjoy my dividends. And I urge everybody out there to, to try it out. All right. I, I really like the way she's broken it down, and, and that is really good, and I'll be coming for advice because uh, my mom, I, I don't know if she's watching, she had invested in some shares and she was holding on to them. I, I had told her to hold on to them. It was one counter that was going down and she held on to it. But you've mentioned about three key benefits about the stock market and I like that. One is that it is a form of investment and also a savings opportunity. Two, you can easily get in and get out. What we talked about, liquidity, it's liquid. You can easily get in, get out, and like maybe assets like land. And then thirdly, I like the way you mentioned about diversifying so you don't put all your eggs in one basket I love that thank you very much um, 
uh, adding to just what um, you've summarized, saving for the future. That is one thing that um, we as the youth, I as a representative of the youth, should learn. You know, we usually say YOLO, we li you only live once. <laughs> and today you eat today, you know, <laughs> yes. so you eat everything today. So Catherine has mentioned one important point whereby we're supposed to save for the future. So thank you, thank you so much, yes, uh, Catherine. Yes, Maureen, if I can just chip in, you know, there was once I, I had that YOLO, and then there was my friend from the real place. She said, YOLO, lo. <laughs> so you live once, live outstandingly. <laughs> so, so make sure that you are investing in the stock market, even to have a great, even like she talked about, a great future. So let's live uh, well, but also let us live outstandingly. Thank you, thank you again. So to Kanye, uh, Jackson has told us at Sasha, uh, the benefit of eating this um, cake. So tell us, what are some of the considerations that I should make before I eat this cake? Thank you, that and I like the conversation, um, especially the last one on uh, living out uh, YOLO. YOLO, eh? Yes. <laughs> uh, well, as you make that YOLO decision, uh, there are some pains that you have to go through. Now, um, some of the considerations as an investor, uh, as someone who wants to come into the capital markets, one of the things you should look out for is, of course, you have a disposable income, right? Either you're, 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 you're employed, you earn a salary, or uh, you, you, you have a business that makes you some money, or you're in, in, in college and you get a stipend from your parents. Now, from that disposable income, of course, is, is what you consume. And uh, then what remains, uh, you save and invest. So we are going to address the saving and invest because what you consume has to be there, you have to manage that. Then uh, what you consider now is, after I've consumed, this is the money I have. What do I need to do with this money? Uh, do I go out and spend all of it? Do I put it in a, in a loan shark? or do I invest for your Lolo, right? So, so that is the first consideration. Now secondly, once you have the money to invest, once you've already uh, you know, demarcated your, 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 your consumption and then you have something left, then you, you, you start thinking about what do I want to invest in? I want to buy a share. Uh, in which company? Then do I understand, do I know what that company does? You have to go out of your way to do a bit of research, a bit of due diligence to understand what, do, what does this company do? Who are they? Who are the managers? Um, what are the benefits? How has it performed over the years? Then once you understand that, then you can now make the informed decision of uh, either buying or not buying. Then, uh, of course, uh, with all this, uh, information is key. So uh, as, a, as an investor, uh, you have to be alive to what's happening around uh, where you target your investment. Now, there are many do's and don'ts. Some of the do's, of course, I've mentioned, you have to research. You have to speak to professional uh, for service provision, like uh, Karita here. So if you want to learn about the company and you want to understand much more about the, the nitty gritties of the company, then uh, the stockbrokers that we have and investment banks are, um, are on hand to assist you with that journey. Then the don'ts, which we've, we've seen over uh, uh, the, you know, the previous IPOs, they had, 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 had uh, you know, uh, investing where because I invested in Safaricom or Kenjen, then all of us want to invest without understanding what Kenjen does. We need to also stop that. And remember, capital market is about the long-term view, mm. right? Uh, it's about the long-term view. So when you're investing now, you know you're investing for uh, a project in the future, and you have to go long-term for you to, to gain the ultimate benefits. I, I like what he said about hard mm. mentality, because yeah. sometimes you know, people run in and do invest in a product or a company they don't understand. Um, I do agree that could be risky. And also, I also think sometimes if you take a very contrary view, you know, sometimes you buy when everybody's running out or when everybody's sitting out, is everybody wants to sit out like now. But I think sometimes having a contrary view because of the fundamental of what you're looking at is a benefit. If you look at people like Warren Buffett, they always tell you when uh, everybody's running in, be very okay. fearful. Mm. Uh, when everybody is staying out, that is the time to, to get in. So I think you also need to make those considerations because you know what you're getting into. If you're looking at a company, say, as Safaricom, you're looking at the fundamentals and asking yourself, if you look at how they've performed uh, and you project that to a two, three year, based on the strategies that they keep talking about, what, what do you think? And as I said, if it's difficult, as uh, Kanye has said, talk to the analysts in the market. They will give you that breakdown. Yes. 
you know, you know, well, I'm really enjoying this conversation, uh -huh. and it is very enlightening. I like the point you talked about research, and you talked about fundamental, and then also talking to analysts. So, what exactly does that entail? Like now, uh, you talked about like uh, looking at the company. What what should one look out for? Because I'm I'm thinking there's someone out there's someone out there. And okay, so, so they're, they're just saying like, you know, there are so many counters. Where do I begin? Do I start researching uh, for, 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 for which counter? How, how do I choose like a good one? Maybe, maybe you can guide us, maybe hypothetically. Uh, maybe how, how would I, what would I be looking for? Maybe like I saw Safaricom, they registered a, um, the other day, they, they've mentioned that they, have made a, they haven't made as much profit as they've made previously. Is it still a good buy? Or maybe what would you advise someone to look out for? But feel free, the whole panelist can, can just chip in. Well, um, I'll start off and the gentleman can <laughs> add to this discussion. Well, first, it can, be a bit, it can be a bit technical, and also it could be very easy to look at. And as I said, and as Kanye has alluded to, we, we in our industry are very lucky because a lot of the investment banks and brokerage, um, the sector itself, we make sure we have you know, analysts within our firms to be able to do that for the investor. Uh, we may not be able to cover the whole 60 companies, for example, NCB Investment Bank, we may not be able to cover that. Mm -hmm. But there are specific sectors we, we are you know, good at, and we own that space and we want to just give information uh, based on our expertise on specific sectors. But if you look now at the community of the whole sector, you'll find another house is very good at something else. So one, those reports are readily available. I think we write them to publish them so that people can read and be informed. So it's easy to get a uh, handle oh, on this report. So, so one doesn't have to go and start analyzing Safaricom and all that. There's already information, There's already that, information that is available. already there. Yes, Thank you. Yes. I think that's very helpful. Correct. Maybe, yeah. maybe yeah. if I... If I could just add something you know, that has, uh, I've seen work on very many occasions. I always tell people that um, when you invest in your passion, money comes in. Uh, there are things that you naturally do every day that can guide even how you think about how to keep your money. For instance, um, I always ask the youths who are the biggest population of this uh, space of investment potential. Uh, you use Safaricom line, for instance. You use data from Safaricom. You use Mpesa from Safaricom. What other analysis would you be wanting to put in your mind to actually say, I think this is a company that I want to work with? Why? This is your partner. It's, it's, it's an institution that you do business with. And I always say that if I'm doing business with you, then it is easier for me to know more about you uh, than a person that I'm getting the face. Not to believe on it. We have banks that we bank with. Uh, you've, you have entrusted them with your money. So why can't you entrust them with your in investment? Most of the banks that we have, the investment banks that we have allowed, uh, have uh, branches of the commercial bank in Alasha. So before you get that technical, first of all, look at things that you relate with every day. That's where you find even uh, in social life. If, if I've never gone to uh, US, uh, or I've never stepped there, and I've never met somebody from the US, then I cannot get a spouse from there. So the same thing, even in like, investment. Jack, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, so investing is really like yes, normal, normal life. life. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, oh, and, and, and I think, I think uh, Jack, you're spot on. The, the, the thing is, um, the hard work is done when you're doing the planning. Mm. So uh, when you're laying down your strategy on where to invest or not to invest, you, you, you ask yourself all those questions. Today, if you, if you as a, a young person, you want to buy a, an iPhone, you want to buy a Samsung S20, mm. you'll do a lot of background check. Yeah, to see true. what does it have, what does it, so that's the same thing you do when you actually go, come in to invest, and that one it helps you understand the company better. So as you put in your money, then uh, you appreciate historical performance. How has it performed over the years? Um, uh, are there has there been any shocks? Uh, what are their prospects into the future? What do they want to do? Are they exploring in new uh, new markets, new products? So that gives you an understanding of I'm investing now, but uh, to get uh, future uh, returns. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what I'm picking up from this conversation is that information is key and we really need to be alive to the situation around us. And that is something that is, uh, you know, out there they say, well, how many effort. So in this case, peer to invest, kunaka effort we have to, to put in so that uh, you are reading newspapers out there, you are watching the business news, so that you are alive to what is happening um, as advised by our uh, uh, team here. Yes, Maureen, and don't switch off the TV when uh, news is over. When business news starts, then you move on to that something else. Listen through, understand what they're saying, and then probably get some information. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. Listen through. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe we have 
uh, we've already discussed the considerations uh, when we are uh, about to make um, now the um, the considerations that we should make before eating our piece of cake. So um, how do we eat this piece of cake? So maybe I'll bounce it back to, to Catherine. So how do we invest in shares? Do we just walk into the NSC? Uh, do we just go to the shop? You know, how do we actually do it? All right, uh, very interesting question. Now, um, first, before you could even invest in that share, you will need somewhere to have this share kept. Eh? Um, and therefore, I think even I, as I follow through your previous uh, Investor Tuesdays, yeah. I, there was a segment about opening an account, which we call a trading account. Yeah. That is very critical. That is where you start. Yeah. And, and who are these uh, people who can open this account for you? Uh, so the CDSC, the Central Depository Settlement Corporation, is the custodian of all the trading accounts in this market. But because also you cannot walk to CDSC to open an account, they have agents all over. Uh, the, the investment banks, the stock brokers are agents to, to the CDSC. And therefore, uh, if you look at uh, CMA's website, you'll find who are the licensed stock brokers and investment banks, including if you look at the NSC's website. So, and if you don't know where to go, come to NCB Investment Bank, we will help you. But uh, what you need to do is first open an account. And uh, that is uh, just like how you open a bank account. And so once you open the account, then you can now look at what it is you want to buy. As um, Kanye said, what, what had you analyzed? What was attracting you to, to, to the market? What is it that you want to buy? So open the account, fund it, buy it. Be aware that there are, there are fees that have to be uh, you know, consumed in part of your investment because there's also the levies, the market levies. Uh, CDSC has to get a stake in that, and SC has to get a stake in that, CMA has to get a stake in that, and all together there's what we call, um, you know, a, a fund, just, you know, compensation fund. So there, there are some related costs, and it would be good to just mention that, so that as you trade, you know, a chunk, uh, I'm spending X amount, but also there's those fees I will pay my broker and the market as well. So uh, be very clear about those fees, so that uh, because they do, uh, they do form part of your costs, and therefore as you're looking at your return, you have to subtract that uh, and and basically once you have uh, an account most of uh, the brokers are able to provide for an online trading platform I know we are talking about going digital mm -hmm. a lot of brokers are there so again you could trade on the go once you have your information you're able to trade buy and sell based on your objectives and um, you can also get your statements on this uh, platforms or through your investment banks so that's how you start start by opening the account and making sure you have that plan then you execute through on your plan Wow. Thank you. Thank wow, you. Wow. Wow. Interesting. I'm, I'm really loving this because I think the nitty gritties are very important and they take you on a step by step uh, way on how to get, get you started and also even the cost. People normally hide <laughs> terms and conditions apply, but I like the fact that we are upfront and we are telling you these are the costs. So you factor that in when you're making your decision. We have some of our audience also popping in some questions, so I don't know if it will disrupt the flow, but I think we can also, just, just to make sure that we are together with our viewers out there, so we encourage you, kindly send in your questions. Also, we love your comments, keep commenting. That makes it more interactive, and that's why we had a panel, so that we can enjoy that interaction. So maybe, as, as we go along, Maureen, I, I'll just ask one question here. This, uh, uh, this person, she's, I'm assuming it's a she, Leishan Ntaserian, yeah, Nteresian, Leishan Teresian. Let's hope you're right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, and maybe I can put a disclaimer and apologize in advance. <laughs> yeah, but um, they are saying I bought Safaricom shares during their first IPO round. What could be the value of the shares, uh, be it at the moment? Uh, what could be the value of the shares at the moment, considering I've never withdrawn any dividends till date? So they are saying they bought Safaricom during the IPO. They've never withdrawn till date. Well, first, um, thanks for that question. And if you bought Safaricom at the IPO, you bought it at five shillings. And I think to, today it's at least 30 or thereabout, give or take. It has hit the 30 mark a few times. So one, that's the capital gains we were talking about. This yes. person has a return of, well, I don't know how many hundreds percent. I, I, I think that the, the, writing, the writing is on the wall behind you. <laughs> so I'm seeing Safaricom, so I think, is that? Yes. 30, 30. So 30. five shillings, 30. So you, you, you do the math. Your percentage growth there is, is uh, really what you're looking for as an investor. Two, every year, Safaricom is that company that has paid a dividend every year since, it's, since it listed on the exchange. And every year, that dividend has grown. Mm. And it's 
one of the companies that pay a higher dividend payout in terms of, if you look at it as a dividend yield, you will find that it is one of the companies that almost gives back its um, almost entire profit, almost, back to the shareholders. So um, you must have been getting your dividend because the dividends are not reinvested. So check with your broker or investment bank where your, where your dividends have been sent to because the, cast, the registrars will send to what's on record. So if you have not received dividends uh, over that last uh, 12 years, that is a problem. So first check with your registrar or your broker how you had uh, chosen to get your dividend payout because that you should get yearly and not really uh, wait until the day you exit the stock to get it. So the dividend, follow it up immediately. As far as the gains, you do the math. Is the gain satisfactory? Six times. Six times. Six times. So yeah. what are you waiting for? But again, if you want to keep it, you could still keep it and keep enjoying the dividend. So make sure you're getting that dividend in your bank account on a yearly basis. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I, and I, I don't know, uh, I, I just thought as you were saying that, because I'm, I'm just thinking this person must be very patient. Imagine from, is it 2008 till now it's 2020. Th those are 12 years yeah. just holding on. I think that's really good. And when you talked about long term, that demonstrates the, 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 that long term anticipation. I, I had someone say this. I don't know if it is true that if you just leave your money in the market you'll, uh, and you don't get in or get out, you'll never make money. Is it true? Or is a fallacy? I don't know. You guys are the experts. <laughs> I think capital market is about long-term view. So uh, yes. uh, the moment you put your money in there, you'd expect that gradually it grows. It grows gradually. For as long as a company is well managed all over time, gradually it, it grows. I mean, you've seen uh, what Safaricom has done for that investor. Mm -hmm. At five shillings now, we are talking about 30 shillings. Um, if they had opted to you know, uh, exit early, they would not be enjoying their capital gain over that time. So over time, uh, there, there is value that, that is created. And that's why in capital markets, we talk about long-term uh, view. I like that. So let's bust all the myths that are there. So and, and thank you so much for that, so that you can actually take a long-term view. Uh, she did mention about Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett is not coming in and getting out tomorrow, but there is a long-term view and a clear objective they have. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for that discussion. Uh, there's also something that uh, Catherine said about a trading account. Um, in our previous webinar, as I had mentioned at the beginning of this session, we uh, we, it was about Tunanza to invest for stock market, and we gave a step-by-step -step guide of opening a CDS account, and you can look at that video. We also have um, short videos, four minutes uh, and a few minutes uh, videos that also guide how you can actually open a CDS account, because that is where you're supposed to start from. So maybe to, to Jackson. Yes. Um, we already have this piece of cake. Yes. You see, at a wedding, you are given a, a very p small piece of cake. So, so that everyone is able to get a share. So what is the minimum uh, amount of uh, shares that one can actually invest in, and is there a maximum? And um, how long does it take to actually get this uh, share? Thank you very much, Maureen. Yeah, um, as I indicated, we have two spaces which uh, you can buy shares from. The first one is the primary market, and the second one is the secondary market. Under the primary market, the price and the number of shares that you can buy from that company is actually prescribed by something called uh, a prospectus. So the company sits down says, for you to be part of our shareholders, we are allowing you to buy a minimum of 500 shares. Then after the IPO uh, process is closed, they will go and analyze and check uh, how many people subscribe to the shares. Then uh, if it is oversubscribed, they use something called prolata. Like they consider everybody's application, but they use a, pre a predefined formula uh, to be able to allocate the shares and uh, the excess money that you might have is dividend to you. In the secondary market, the minimum number of shares that uh, we prescribe or is prescribed by law is 100 shares. So you look at the company, uh, Safaricom was at 30 shillings. If I want to buy Safaricom shares, uh, I just need to have a minimum of uh, 3,000 3, shillings, but there must, I always said there must be also economical sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, if you're buying a company that has the share price is 5 shillings, then uh, it becomes a bit difficult even to calculate that commission. So the minimum is 100 in the secondary market. Uh, you can go as far as you can. You can own as much as you can. Uh, the more the media. And, uh, the other thing that's so very uh, good in the secondary market is that the moment you, you start with your 100 shares, nothing stops you from making it a periodical process. Like you can actually 
talk to the stockbrokers or the investment banks, tell them every month I'll be depositing 50,000 shillings, then you can buy the shares until you get a big volume of the specific company that you're interested in. I think that should be. Thank you, thank you, Jack. And how long, uh, if I go to my stockbroker today and I buy the, the shares, yeah. uh, will I get them immediately? Or is there a process yeah. that takes? Yes, we have what you call, but I would like my sister Catherine to, for that's what she does. Uh, I will be taking away her job <laughs> <laughs> if, if I was to go. But just to, just to mention, this, what you call a settlement process. Uh, settlement in layman terms means when you buy shares, you get the shares, and uh, the person who sold the shares to you gets the money. So money must move from my buyer's account. Uh, if I'm the buyer, money will move from me then in refers I'll be given an equivalent amount of shares. Mm -hmm. So that process we prescribe or as per the rules and regulation of the exchange right now it's T plus three. Meaning if you buy shares today you count three days and those shares should be in your account. However, a point of disclaimer, there are brokers and uh, Catherine can confirm that even can you in this market who are able to actually do T plus like one. So if I buy shares today they are built up in my account tomorrow but they have not been uh, the, the, it is not, we are not saying it's a standard practice, but as a market you are provided for T plus 3 to make sure that that transaction has gone through. I remember when uh, we were in the manual system, it was quite exciting. Uh, we, we used to have T plus what? That 20, 21. 21, yes. yes. <laughs> Even more. Yeah, and then uh, <laughs> I, I remember the biggest joke was that uh, Kanye, that time used to be my colleague somewhere, we, uh, you have to clear your counter. So you are taking certificates to cancel. So things. So we are doing uh, T plus 3, but our desire is actually to do the closest possible with the derivatives market. Mm -hmm. We cannot afford that widow. We have to make it T plus 0, in fact. Uh, it has also happened with our partners, CBA, when we were doing a Makipa, mm -hmm. that uh, we were able to, you, you buy the board and it is reflected into your account immediately. And when you sell, you get money differently. So mm -hmm. we are there. We are there. Yeah. We're going to T plus yeah. 0. Yeah. And, and let me clarify what he has said on the settlement, which I totally agree. Equities, we keep it strictly at T plus 3, yeah. unless obviously uh, there was a need uh, to accelerate something. But the, the, the regulator is here, and the rule is T plus 3. Yes. And uh, now, the T plus 1, those are the fixed income. Uh, if you trade a bond, mm -hmm. again, we are open to the plus 1, plus 2, or maximum the plus 3. So the bond uh, mm. trading is what is open to that uh, variation, and like the, the equities market, because the bonds, the, if the buy and seller agree to settle tomorrow, then we can do it on a T plus one basis. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. And I think that's a very good concept, because I think that question ties into um, what the difference between uh, attracting an investor into the market and not attracting one. Because I think what people want and what the youth want is you can get in now and get out to in the next few hours. Yes. I think the, the, that is possible. And, and, and then, of course, uh, as a market, we are working towards streamlining that so that we can bring that down uh, mm -hmm. so that you can get in and get out um, and, and make money and move on to other things. I like that, yeah, because the, the point that you've just mentioned, uh, we're in a forum and when we said, uh, how long does it take? I like the fact that Jack has said we came from far <laughs> to Metoka Valley, and that is meaning we are coming from far and we are also going far. I like the, the analogy, we can actually have it uh, almost the same day. You can buy, sell, and, and I'm glad that our regulator is actually supporting that and we are headed in the right direction. Yeah, so, so we, we, we had a, a, a question. I don't know if maybe I can interject at this time again. And, and thank you so much even for the various questions that are coming in. And um, there's one, one gentleman, uh, he's asking, he understands that one way for someone to make money, there's a way that someone can make money even when the market is coming down. Is it possible to do that here in Kenya? And then also secondly, is, is there hedging of shares? Or, or I, I think he must be a sophisticated person. So he's asking, uh, when the market is going down, you're having, I think what we'd call a bear run, when the market is going down, can you still make money? Or do you only make money when the market is going up? Well, yeah, that is a very sophisticated investor. And now we would be moving outside the piece of cake, the share, uh, to talk about the derivative as an instrument, which would be allow you to make money whether the market is up or down. And the derivative itself is where you just buy a contract, a 
um, and of course it has an underlying asset. Now if the market is going down, or that's my view in a derivative, then also you want to buy a contract and you want to go short so that uh, you then um, benefit from that. And if you accept, expect the prices are going to be going up, uh, you also want to go long. So there are those hedging strategies and I think part of the reason why anybody would be even interested in a derivative one is not only is it cheaper to get into and get you know your investment because you're only paying a fraction of what your really mm -hmm. underlying assets would have been but also you're able to hedge against uh, market shocks market movements particularly when you have a portfolio and it's 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 it's, it's going down you can now buy um, uh, a derivative instrument uh, just uh, with the opposite uh, perception so that you get some money as your stocks are still in your account. Yeah, so, so, so they should stay tuned in to this Investing Tuesdays yeah. Yeah. because we shall definitely have a, uh, a session on derivatives and you'll be able to get all those exciting, uh, uh, I mean, opportunities where you can be able to hedge. Yeah, you heard the words <laughs> are. You can hedge, you can speculate and, yeah. and all of that. So, so just keep tuned in. So today, uh, Maureen is reminding us we are eating the piece of cake. And, 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 and we, we are we enjoying will, it. We will set uh, two other dates. Yes. Uh, she talked about fixed income, that is bonds. So that is one date we need to, to set and invite uh, the panelists again to discuss. And also another date for the derivatives so that we can uh, uh, discuss and for people to also break down what derivatives uh, are. So back to our piece of cake. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we've had um, all the good about the shares and all that. So maybe to, to Kanye, what are the risks of actually now partaking in this cake? Thank you, Maureen. I, I think in every business, in any business that you touch, there's always risk. Yes. Uh, Mama Bog out there operating a Kibanda, there's always the city council will come and you know bring it down. That's yeah. always risk. Yeah. Uh, so so uh, cap capital markets and, and in shares specifically are a very high risk product. Um, and these risks uh, emanate from various uh, corners. From, you know, if you look at, at from a macro perspective, uh, you have a political risk, uh, uh, maybe you're in a market and then uh, of course there's turmoil and then you know, we're we used to post-election violence. So that could also affect uh, you know, the pricing in the market. Uh, you also have um, other, uh, other risks that probably are not out of your own making. Uh, they're event-based. For example, the pandemic we have, that's another risk. Uh, you have to also look at that. Uh, you also look at um, you know, the, the performance. I mean, as an owner, now as, as an investor, um, and you already have that cake, you are part owner of that cake. You, you, that, that is part of, you are part and parcel of that company. So as you, as you invest, then you have to understand what uh, um, 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 projects the company is investing in. Uh, you, part, uh, you have to understand the decision making that is going into investing those projects. And if there are areas where you think you, you, there are issues, then you, you, have, uh, you have opportunities also raise uh, your concerns uh, through an annual general meeting and all that. So any business, uh, however, however structured, has risk. And capital markets, especially equities, is a high risk business. Now, you look at also at um, uh, other inherent risks that come from maybe uh, changing regulations, you know, um, uh, changing government policy. Uh, all this sum up uh, your, 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 your discussion when it comes to risk. And that's why I was saying that at times you look at uh, when you're assessing a, a company that you want to invest in, um, it's good to go get that professional help so that in the event you've missed out something, then they're able to tell you, as you invest in this company, just know in a couple of years uh, there's this particular regulation that is in place that can, can affect uh, the share price of that uh, of your, or the inv your investment and you need to either uh, uh, have a timeline on how, how long you, you're going to take in terms of investing in that company or you consider another company based on, on your risk tolerance as a person. No, you know when you talk about the risk, uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking and now I've, I've had this a twin for risk. There's risk and return. Uh, are they normally correlated, or maybe what, what are your thoughts around it? Because sometimes we may have some people, and I, I think in one of the episodes we had, so, uh, especially for the ladies, I don't know. They, they said they are. I don't know if it is true for all, but some people are. They don't like taking a lot of risk. Others would prefer to take that risk because they probably can see some return. Or uh, she talked about being a contrarian. Maybe it looks like everybody is not going that way, but there's something. Maybe you can comment about the risk and return. Yeah, the, the rule of the thumb is that, of course, uh, where there is high risk, there is high return. Mm. So if you're able to bottom that risk, 
high risk, then of course your expectations that you'll get better return or higher return. Mm. Uh, if you're very risk averse, uh, and then of course now you're investing in other products, not necessarily equity, then it means that you're comfortable just investing at a certain level since you don't want to lose much. But in equities, as it is, as we've said, it's high risk, high return, but also the, 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 the chances of losing are so high. So that's why it's high risk, high return. All right, I like that. So I think the better term would be take calculated risk mm -hmm. depending on your risk appetite. So thank you very much uh, for that. I think one should not be afraid of getting in because uh, risk is everywhere. When you woke up, there's a risk you could have, God forbid, gotten COVID. Mm -hmm. Or okay, th there's always risk that is there, but you have to take the measures like we are doing at this time, whereby you can take preventive. And I like what you mentioned earlier about re being re uh, research. Know more about the company. Watch what is happening. That way you take a calculated uh, risk and, and definitely you'll be looking for a return. Yeah. Maybe yeah. if I could just add to something that uh, Kanya said that, that we always ignore a lot. Mm -hmm. It's also good to know your risk profile as a person. Mm. Uh, because you find somebody will come and say, I'm a very risk averse person or I'm a risk taker. M maybe you can explain uh, for our audience. Just yeah. break it down. Don't mind. What is risk averse? Um, risk averse is a person who doesn't believe that they should uh, lose anything because of their action. Oh. Uh, so if you, if these, the other people, if you tell them, if you get out, you'll be shot. They will rather live in that room the rest of their life and die there. Mm. Uh, risk takers on the other side are people who say, uh, well, as long as uh, there is life after death, <laughs> I am happy to move on and do anything that can make my life different. Mm. However, there is a very thin line between risk affairs people and risk takers. Uh, that's why we have risk neutral people. People don't know whether they want to get out of the house at the bishop or they want to wait for life after death because that is the ultimate uh, destination. So the thing is, um, when you come over it, there are things that you do naturally that can actually give you an indicator of the kind of a person you are. A very good example is how you react, for instance, when there's a tire burst. You know, there are those people, if there's a tire burst, they will run 20 kilometers, others mm -hmm. will just sit and watch. Number two is things like how you react when you find a clown mingling somewhere, like in CBD. Uh, this takers naturally will go and check what it is because they don't want to pass anything. This gaffers people will go farthest. They will be asking questions about the occurrence when they are very far. So profile yourself so that even as you take that risk, it matches your, your, persona, your, your personal profile so that you don't get a heart attack because uh, you bought maybe shares of a company X and the price has come down. Uh, then uh, that was all your fortune. Number two, in terms of risk, is uh, asking yourself how, what is the source of the money you're risking. Uh, if uh, you go take Syrox, it's, it's called Shylock's money, mm. and then you come and you want to invest it, uh, it is a more risky money than if you're saying it's my personal savings. Why? My personal savings, I'm ready to wait, like for the 12 years for our client who has been there with Safaricom. But if you had borrowed money from, uh, from somebody that needs the money, then the discussion about your risk tilts completely. Mm -hmm. So personal evaluation is also very important, and also your age. Uh, when you get certain ages, we always tell people, don't try things that you've never done. Uh, so don't go those uh, crazy pick jabbing when you are 70, uh, and then you've never even tried when you're even 20. So your age is also something very critical to analyze. Yeah. Uh, we are speaking to the youth. I always tell youths have uh, 20 to 25 years of investment. So I don't know what you'd be doing with a piece of land for 25 years. And even, uh, even if you are to accumulate it, uh, how much value it will have accumulated. But the most important thing is your age, the source of your money, and your risk profile is key. And that's where the professional people come in, to just be able to ask you those questions and give you uh, a proper advice of where exactly you belong. Thank you, Maureen. Uh, thank you, Jack. Uh, well, think, just before we move, I think uh, when, when, you, when you talk about risk, it's always good to talk about the mitigation. Because, mm -hmm. of course, when, when, when I'm left to know that uh, um, uh, when I walk out of that door, someone will shoot me, then I have on, I'm not addressed to the risk of walking out of that door. Mm -hmm. But I can wear a bulletproof. That's mm -hmm. the mitigation. So yes. even in capital markets, as you invest in uh, various stocks, uh, you are mitigating against the loss of one company, uh, what we call uh, diversification. She mentioned about diversification earlier. And I think you'd find that you don't want just to put everything in one basket, all your eggs. Eh? You can put them in various uh, companies. Then that way, you're able to address the risks that we're discussing about. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Kanye. Um, Gemma, you know what I've just picked up? Yes. Is um, Hakikisha Umejijua. 
Hakikisha umejichunga. Umejijua. <laughs> umejijua. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hakikisha umejijua. Eh, <laughs> <laughs> so, jitambue. Eh, <laughs> jitambue. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um so yeah. maybe to to coin in um a question around uh the risk, maybe I'll pose it to to Kanye. Uh Masi Munyao is asking uh what happens to uh individuals who have who have shares when they die. <laughs> okay. So um it's unfortunate that they have to die as investors. We don't like losing investors, yeah. but it's part of life. Yeah. So when you die, there's a process of transferring those securities to uh, beneficiaries. So um, what happens is that um, the person who uh, was running the account uh, more, more often than not has, a, a, has an next of kin registered somewhere. Or once that happens and they didn't have that, then there's a process of, through the courts that can uh, allocate that estate, which we call you know whatever that person holds, you know, securities, uh, you know properties and everything, to the next of kings or the beneficiaries. So there's a process that now kicks in to assist now the, those uh, shares to move to the next next person who has been identified as a beneficiary. Okay, so they don't get lost. No, they don't get lost. They don't. <laughs> they don't get lost. <laughs> worry of uh, They're still within the family. Yes. <laughs> From experience, we are doing transmissions every other time. So that the process Kanye has explained is a transmission process. Yes. Um, I would say, look, prepare your wills or name your beneficiaries so that it, it, it's an easier process for everybody who is involved. But if you haven't, again, it will go in tested, um, in tested succession uh, and we will give the beneficiaries as instructed by the court. So, yeah. Yeah. So um, someone is, I know we've discussed uh, quite a lot, mm -hmm. and someone is wondering, when do I buy, when mm -hmm. do I sell, when mm -hmm. do I hold? I know we have explained uh, various situations that we have in our market. So uh, maybe I'd pose it to Jack, when do you buy, when do you sell, and when do you hold? Uh, and, and allow me to also tag on the same. Yes. Uh, there's Billy Koech. Billy Koech is also asking, do you make more money by trading or collecting dividends? So maybe you can also add it, and of course it's open for you guys. Thank you very much. Uh, I th uh, just to start on uh, when is it time to buy, I always tell any potential investor that today is the day. In fact, if it's not today, it was supposed to be yesterday. Mm. Why? Um, the share business is a continuous process. So you will find that um, uh, I bought shares of Safaricom maybe five years ago. I feel that I should move from there uh, and buy maybe Gen. So it's a continuous process, but the most important thing is you buy when you're ready. That today, if I want to just make it even very basic, is that uh, the principle by buying is buy low and then sell high. That's the basic principle. But the low will never be low for everybody. For instance, somebody who bought Safari Com at uh, five shillings and it went to three shillings, the three shillings was the low for that day. So, when you're ready, get into the market. It took, uh, as long as uh, you've done what Wanakanya said at Catherine in terms of doing that research, evaluating those companies, your starting point is there. Because even if you tell you to go and buy when it's low and it, it doesn't come down, then it is there's a problem. However, I, there are seasons. Uh, if you access most of the market reports that we have in this uh, economy of ours, you realize that you can be able to see a trend that most time is obeyed, and that's the best time. When the calf turns down, then get in. When it starts going up, uh, that's the time not to start thinking about what is your optimum investment policy that Catherine was referring to. And this avoid greed. Greed comes in when, uh, when you set your investment objective, then you want to actually break them yourself. Uh, and uh, I had a case of somebody saying, I am ready, if I get 20% of my investment uh, from this, I mean return, I'm good. When it got to 20, say, no, let me wait to get that. Then when it got to that, it was like, ah, now this one can get to 50. Uh, today we are talking about a very different story because that counter is actually almost the IPO price that came to market with. So when you're ready with your investment policy, you've done your research, you've done the companies that you want to buy, that is your starting time. And uh, it is always exciting when uh, you tap into peculiar happenings in the market. <coughs> like I'm telling people, COVID is a peculiar happening that has come to give us an opportunity as young people, for instance, to get into the market. I was, today in the morning, I was looking at um, like the banking stocks, and uh, for sure I can tell you that all of them are discounted at the moment. If you look at the price of um, like KCB, the highest it ever went, uh, and you look at what it's selling today, 
even apps, uh, you, you realize something, there's already a discount that you've been given. So CISOs also provide opportunities of getting the market. But unfortunately, uh, we, we chase the market, and that's how we don't make money. Uh, because you wait, and uh, Catherine alluded to that, that uh, when the market is like for you to get in, you watch from a distance. Then when the price starts moving up, you jump in. All of a sudden, the price slows down. Then uh, you are like, okay, fine, I would have made more money if I got in. So this also come in to provide the opportunity. But I'm sure, uh, Catherine, uh, I'm sparing my ones because of where I see it. Might not be very subjective. Maybe she might uh, add something specific <laughs> to that. No, no, I think Jack, you're you're, you're spot on. I think uh, markets are one are cyclical in nature, so you'll always have that you know up and down curve. Um, the idea is to first, if you have your fundamental story right, you'll be getting in and saying, look, I'm getting a twenty, and if it hits forty, mm -hmm. I'm happy to leave. And it doesn't mean you leave the market. You're just going to buy another stock with that profits that you've made. Um, you could even find, because even in a particular stock, the cycle would be the same, you have that curve, you could even find you'll be exiting at its optimum level, and then a few months later, the same stock that gave you the 30% return has sort of retracted, and you can still get in, in the same stock. So even in this story of the Safaricom uh, shareholder, the question, Safaricom has had its cycles. You know, it has hit 20, it has come down to 13. So all those were opportunities to, to go out and come back in and, and book that profit. So it's just a matter of going in with the target price in mind, but also to the element of risk, you also need to have a stop loss gap. Because sometimes you have a stock that has started to 100 shillings and it's falling, and every day it's falling and you have not triggered your sell point. So it will come down to 10 shillings and maybe get suspended and you're stuck with it. What happened to when it was coming down? You know, And maybe you, you are sitting with it at 100 because you moved your goalpost, yeah. And you are saying when it gets to one teller, I'll sell it. Yeah. So once you have your objective and you hit it, analyze that objective properly and exit. You can put that money in another mm -hmm. stock that is starting to grow or is showing you some potential of growth, even as a company itself. You're like, this company is going to go places. Let me put my money in. And as I said, the stop mm -hmm. loss is very important because sometimes we don't uh, follow the business news. We don't follow the NSC reports. Mm -hmm. And then you think, I have a stock. 50 shillings, the next time you look, it's five bomb. So be an active investor. That's yeah. when you'll know when to get in and when to get out. Don't be passive about your money. Mm. Be active. And it's just a matter of looking at an NSU website every day and mm. looking at this sticker and seeing where my investments are lying. Yeah. yeah, have they hit my target price? Uh, or talking to your brokers. Uh, be better still active. having the app. Yeah, have yes. the app. It's on your palm. Now. Yeah, yeah. So visit our yeah. app store and, and download the NSC. So just go to app store or play store and type Nairobi Securities Exchange and you'll be able to download the app and you'll have real-time prices right. as you invest. Yes. And, and there's something that you say that, okay, I, I wish I knew. You know, there was one time my mom uh, had bought some shares, I think it was uh, Mumia's at 45, and it kept coming down. So when it, reached, um, uh, when it reached 40, I told her, maybe it will come up. And then it went to 30, I told her it may come up. And then it reached 10 shillings, and she was not talking to me again. <laughs> <laughs> so I should have introduced her to you. And then, of course, I think th that's really the ethics. And I think one has to, uh, like you said, uh, stop gap. Uh, have a stop loss mm -hmm. so that you learn to cut your losses and then also let your winners run. If there's a stock that is doing well, let it go on. Yeah, but if you've made some losses, uh, let it uh, just learn to cut your losses. And, and even before I, I just finish, again, uh, th there are some two questions. I don't know if, Maureen, we can just take them because um, I know time is really well spent, yes. but if we can quickly have them to answer. Yes, that's fine, Okamu. All right, so, so I'll, I'll just pick them. There's Mutinda Nzuki. Mutinda Nzuki is asking, kindly, kindly advise how dividends are accrue or are calculated. Kindly advise how dividends accrue or are calculated. And then secondly, we have Stanley Munga Kamau. He's asking, how can I reduce the associated risk while investing? So two questions, how do I calculate uh, how do dividends accrue or are calculated? And then secondly, how do I, how do I reduce the associated risk while investing? Well, I can start maybe for dividends, because of course, uh, as you invest in these companies, the, the companies have what we call a dividend policy. So uh, they, they, they'll, 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 they say this is the amount of, this is the percentage you're going to 
we, we will pay for the next, uh, you know, in the next couple of years. So as you understand the dividend policy of that company, again, these are the, some of the research, uh, the research you need to undertake to understand uh, how, what you're investing in. So that then helps you. Again, dividends is uh, a subset of income. It's, it's actually what you earn as an investor. So if your company is performing well over time and is making profits, then those profits are plowed back to you uh, as an investor in the form of a dividend. Correct. And they're really calculated based on, one, the company will, will issue a statement saying we're paying maybe a shilling 50 mm -hmm. or two shillings for every share you hold. Mm -hmm. So it just depends on how much of, your, of, of what you hold in that stock. If you hold 20,000 shares mm -hmm. and they're paying out two shillings, you know you're going to get a, um, a payment of 40,000 shillings, mm -hmm. less the withholding tax. But uh, it's really always driven by the company and uh, the resolution passed at the AGM to pay that dividend. And once you know the dividend per share, you know what you're getting based on the shares you hold. So that's, that's one. And that's to your second question then, um, how to manage the risks while investing? Yes. yes. We've talked about diversification. So look at different sectors. Banking stocks sector right now, the banking sector, it looks attractive because uh, it's cheap. But also if I had two, three million or even uh, half a million, I don't put everything in one sector mm. because the sector will all move as a herd. So mm. if it's all going down, it's going down across all the banks. Yeah. Uh, but if you say, look, I'll buy one bank here and then I'll buy a telco or I'll buy uh, a consumer good, you'll be, you're able to diversify your holding. Therefore, the, you, you re the, the impact on one sector will not mean the whole portfolio is looking bad. And secondly, just what we were saying, have an objective on the where you want to get out, 30%, 40%, and then uh, have a bottom where you say, look, if this company turns, for whatever reason, this is a much loss I can take. And sometimes you still have to make that decision because that's how you manage risks. And say, look, at a 10% loss or 15, I'm out. And uh, I'd rather take that money and put it in something else. So have your stop loss and have your also exit strategy when it's at the top and have um, diversification on the portfolio. Wow, wow, wow. So thank you very much. I think our panelists, I think that has been very enlightening. Yes. And also we'd like to appreciate our viewers. I think they've been sending very good informative questions. And it is from these questions as they are being answered, we are really gleaning a lot from them. So thank you very much uh, also for your participation and even making the time uh, to actually be with us. I actually wish we had more time. Uh, I can see time is uh, far much spent. Maybe we can spend the next um, one minute uh, from uh, the, the panelists can give us a parting shot mm -hmm. and then we will know the way forward. Jack, maybe you can start. Thank you very much, Maureen. Quite an exciting time for us. Uh, I always say there is a price that you pay for everything. Yes. And the school of life has its own school fees. You choose to get the knowledge and you make your own decisions and you go a long way. Or you can choose that I don't want to get to the school of life and uh, you never learn and you live the way you are. So get into the market. Um, we've been in this market for long enough and I can tell you every time I get money, the, the easiest way of keeping my money is putting it in the market. It's very exciting. Uh, number two is uh, we offer formal trainings. If you feel that uh, you've gotten to a level that you want now to sharpen your skills in terms of how to trade, making those decisions about risk management, then come join our classes and then uh, we will make the place or the school of fees cheaper than a real life experience. And we are also starting a simulator business that we, I mean, that will allow you to actually simulate your position uh, at different times of, of the market. Thank you very much also for inviting me to be in this panel. Thank, Thank you, Jack. Uh, Catherine? Uh, Maureen, all I can say to anyone watching us, particularly if you are in that youth bracket, do not be told that this market is not for you. This market is absolutely for you. We want you to come and participate. We want you to come and grow your savings and get uh, reap the rewards. So this is your time. Do not look at the market as uh, something other people do. You are most welcome to participate in this uh, growth opportunities that we have. And um, open that account today and start trading. Uh, just go for it. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, David? Thank you. Uh, and and I, I want to just bring the soberness as a regulator and say, as you invest, just know your investments are well protected 
uh, that is our role. Our key mandate is to protect you as an investor to ensure that you invest in the right, you make the right decisions. And as you uh, participate in the capital markets, then you are sure that uh, your investment is well protected. And there's no right time. This is the time to get in. Uh, because uh, in, 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 in investing in shares or in any other security, the time you make that decision is not uh, in any way um, affected by what will happen tomorrow. It's a decision you make today, get into the bus and move. Thank you, thank you, uh, Kanye. Uh, Wagama, I hope you I was have I was taking very good <laughs> notes. <laughs> I've actually been taking very good notes. At least I know from this session, I, I can really tell uh, what a share is. Yeah. Of course, it is part ownership. It is that kick that you own in a company. And I also got to understand that I can either participate in the primary market when they're issuing it to us say, through an IPO like Safaricom, or I can come to the secondary market if I missed out and still get to buy that. I learned the, the benefits. Of course, one of them was um, uh, it's an investment opportunity. And then I can come in and get out at any time. And also, I can get to diversify. I've learned also a lot about risk taking. And I think my parting shot, and even what I've really gotten or my take home, is to start now. So so do not fear. I think I'll just dive in with both legs and then we shall swim because we shall not sink. Yes, and uh, information is key. And do not put all your uh, eggs in one basket. So join us on 24th of November for this and more. But for now, it's bye-bye. See you. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.